Mr. Investor, welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be action packed. Hiya! We are going to be addressing BlackRock and their purchasing of bingo and other stocks. We are going to be talking about autism diagnosis and genetic testing and why this can potentially be huge money. We are also going to be talking about clues in recruitment and how we can potentially work alongside PacBio, Illumina, and Oxford Nanopore. Let's talk about C19 testing and contracts. We will also talk about universities retiring their use of PacBio but continuing continuing to use bio nano i just wanted to tell you guys that a lot of work went into this video so please show me some love my friends it's only for entertainment and i'm not a financial advisor i also want to say thank you to all my bosses baby i want to say thank you to j joseph tmg freds blue sky on mars thank you guys for supporting me all my true supporters i love you thank you so much if you want to become my true supporter just click join up here it's only 99 cents and you help me create great videos like this one but if you're unable to join just you clicking the like button and hitting subscribe means the world to me I love you and I appreciate you. Okay, first things first, let's address this kind of BlackRock purchase here. We can see 29,929 shares being bought. I think a lot of hype got into this, but apparently it's old news and the purchases were actually a while back. Nevertheless, it's very interesting to me. You know why? This is how it starts. So if we take a look at another website, we can see here the source date. These shares were actually bought in December last year in 2020. But I'm going to show you some purchasing behavior and we're just going to discuss another stock that BlackRock also bought. So guys, let me show you this is Workhorse, right? And this is how they behave with workhorse at first they take a little dippy dippy here i can only go as far back as november but you can see here they added workhorse to their blackrock variable series and a small portion 12,000 shares so what they do is they take a little dippy dip and then when they smell money bam conviction they ended up purchasing over 7 million shares of workhorse so with bingo they're very curious you know they took this initial dip dip their toes into the water dip their fingers in the pie they wanted to see if that pie was hot and warm so all institutions do it. They have to research really hard before they commit that big money. Can we expect BlackRock to be doing this for bingo? Dipping in and then putting in that big money later on. So I just want to show you it with regards to PacBio at the way the ARK bought into PacBio. So this website is called lucidtracking.com. You can find the link down below in my description. So this is really good for tracking what kind of stocks the ARK buys, but they're also going to be getting BlackRock too soon and maybe even Vanguard. So just above my head, it's tracked here the first time that they bought PacBio. I've only been able to go back as far as as um, the 13th of August 2020 and you can see here PacBio was around $5.61 and they were still buying smallish positions they were buying like 300k here $200,000 here $113,000 here and when they first opened the position I think it was back in June or even March or something like that but it just goes to show that even the best institutional investors take their time to research dip their toe a little bit in the stock before they make big purchases C-L-I-A who you gonna hire? Ghostbusters? Nah man, we don't need none of that, but we do need some fine and dandy scientists for our new crib. As you can see here four days ago on the right, BioNanoGenomics is looking for a scientist or senior scientist full time in San Diego, California, US. So they decided to hire a senior scientist for our new lab in San Diego, but this is with some very interesting and particular skills. If we go down to the preferred skills and abilities of this uh, candidate, they want somebody with experience with sample prep for next generation sequencing, Illumina, Pack Bio and Oxford Nanopore. Huh? Why do we need these skills? Are we going to be processing some samples for sequencing companies? Both long read and short read? Yeehaw! My cowboys and cowgirls, this is so, so big. Let me know what you think and your thoughts on these specific terminology for these specific skills that they require. Why do they need you to have experience with sample prep for next generation sequencing for Illumina, Pack Bio, Oxford Nanopore? Please tell me in the comments if you have any ideas or if you think I'm mistaken. Just let me know. Drop me a comment down below. Are we going to be a sequencing company? Probably not. When we were here at the Festival of Genomics, Dr. Alka Chaube, she said that we're not a sequencing company. So I decided to pester Joe Butler, BioNanoGenomics employee, and ask him. I said, with regards to the nano channel nano nozzle device, is this anything to do with helping the accuracy of reading acylated and methylated groups as the new study just published? Smiley face. To which he replied, A gentleman never talks about his nozzle. Good day to you, sir. One inch wonder. If you got to this point in the video, make sure you write micro migs in the comment below. Yeehaw! It's not about the size, it's about the motion in the ocean. So BioNanoGenomics is also looking for a shipping and receiving clerk. So is this to do with the CLIA lab? Is this to do with Linogen? Are they just recruiting people so they can assist in production, in work, order completion, kitting, and final packaging? So guys, remember Microsoft. They're talking about speeding up our testing and making it cheaper. Well, sunshine, there is mass testing about to go down over the next decade 
decade. So you better strap yourself down because we're in for a wild ride, baby. So I also looked at Linogen and who they're recruiting for. They're looking to go full time with sales and marketing, finding a director of marketing. So what they're doing is focusing on delivering these kind of genetic testing and services for disorders of childhood development and also expanding into other disease states. So Dr. Jonathan Pesno was talking back in 2017, all the way back there, talking about how he was able to find structural variations for autism. He was talking about how impactful bionanogenomics is on his autism genomics research. So as you guys may know, autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder that affects millions of children and adults worldwide. There is ample evidence that structural variations, including large chromosomal rearrangements and copy number variants are major contributors to the disorder. So I'm going to discuss how much money there is in actually diagnosis and all the problems surrounding trying to get a diagnosis for autism. So four years ago, I used to be a carer for a kid with autism and his younger brother, we believe also had a developmental delay and autism, but it was very hard for him to get a diagnosis on the NHS. So in terms of autism, that client's younger brother had to wait around about one year and a half or two years for the state, for the NHS to actually pay for his diagnosis and for him to be able to actually receive that diagnosis and be recognized so that he could get all of the support that he needed. So now I'm going to show you some numbers and figures. This is uh, how much it costs to actually diagnose a child with autism. So the full process typically requires around 13 hours of professional time to complete, but there's a backlog of so many people to actually look at. Although the initial screening assessment only takes one to two hours and the cost surrounding it costs 800 pounds. This is 1,200 US dollars per child for a completed diagnostic assessment. So it's very difficult to get one of these appointments and this diagnosis under the NHS in the UK. So I'm going to show you how much it costs if we actually go private as well. So here in the UK, how much does it cost to have a child or adult assessed privately for autism? For a child for full diagnostic assessment, it costs between £1,950 all the way to £2,500. And for an adult, £1,500 quid. And it's very hard and a long waiting list if you were to do it under the NHS. For those of you that don't know, the NHS is the National Health Service. It's basically free healthcare for all, but there's long waiting times and it's very hard to get diagnosis, waiting for operations as well. And we're very grateful because it's free, but it's still a long waiting process and a lot of people are suffering, especially kids with autism that don't get the diagnosis in time for the government to be able to provide support for their needs. So in terms of the private cost, £2,500 in dollars for my American audience is $3,434. Now let's look at how many people have autism in the world. You can see here, according to epidemiology, it's estimated that one in 160 children has autism spectrum disorder. Some well-controlled studies, however, have reported figures that are substantially higher. So other studies have said one in 59 children and one in 100 adults are affected by autism spectrum disorder. So let's do some quick maths. Considering there's 7.6 billion people on this planet in 2019, and if we're to divide on the low side, say only like one in 160 children have autism. If we divide 7.6 billion by 160, we get 47,500,000. And then if we times it by the low end, the cheapest one we can find, that's US dollars, $1,200 per child. That amounts to a monumentous 56.4 billion US dollars. And that's only one developmental disorder. So imagine we can also do screening for COVID, we can do screening for genetics, we can do screening for cancer as well. What's interesting to see though, I wanted to see, will insurance be paying for genetic tests in the future? And according to Medline Plus, we can see in many cases, health insurance plans will cover the cost of genetic testing when it's recommended by a person's doctor. So coming back to the problem, we can see that it takes so long to actually get a diagnosis when you're here on under the NHS. Here it states under the BBC that new data suggests that some patients thought to have autism waited over 19 weeks. But obviously in the case of my client, he had to wait a year and a half for his diagnosis. So that being said, let's move on to Linogen. As you can see here, it says that Linogen generates $6.3 million in revenue every year. And over here we can see Linogen has been a pioneer in clinical testing for structural variations in patients with neurodevelopmental disorders, including autism spectrum disorder, developmental delay, and other constitutional genetic diseases. And these guys are one of the top dogs in doing it. As they said here, we make genetic testing for children with autism spectrum disorder and developmental delay accessible by combining the most advanced testing technology with dedicated service and support. So there's money to be made, there's people that we can potentially help. This looks like a very lucrative industry and a nice cash flowing business for bionanogenomics to be involved in. Also, bionanogenomics was talking about Linogen. They were saying it's a build versus buy decision. So when they first acquired it, they said, we're not patient. We essentially bought our customer base to accelerate the whole reimbursement pathway process. Essentially, they want cash flow and they're also going to be getting access to both providers and direct consumers. This was a very strategical buy for them. So also when they're doing genetic testing, they'll also be selling probably the data on to pharmaceutical companies so they can actually target. So with all this wave of direct consumers actually looking for genetic testing for certain comorbidities and diseases, they said, 
said that they're actually probably going to be working alongside pharmaceutical companies and they'll be able to identify translocations and thus find new druggable targets. They also stated that Sapphire is both a discovery and future diagnostic tool and they were saying it already is used by pharma companies, diagnostic companies and well-renowned cancer and genetics research institutions around the world. With some research bodies stating that genetic testing market is expected to gain market growth for the forecasted period of 2021 to 2028 in the value of $585 billion and grow a compounded annual growth rate of 11.8%. That is huge. A lot of people have actually been able to secure contracts. So if we see here, this is a company called Fulgent Genetics and they've actually secured a partnership with New York City to test and trace for C19 testing and they were awarded the contract for 2021 school year. And as you guys may already know, Illumina was selected to actually sequence genomes for a new C19 study and this was in the UK as soon as a C19 hit in May 2020. So Illumina has been working alongside Genomics England and lots of governing bodies in the UK for genomics. So some of you guys put me on Fulgent Genetics and it absolutely went haywire the last couple weeks because they were securing contracts. And I don't know if you guys have seen this but um, the C19 genomic research held by New York Genome Center, this was January 26, 2021, these guys were also working on using next generation sequencing so we're talking about Illumina and we're talking about Fulgent who combines the company's advanced next generation sequencing solutions with actionable results and genetic counseling. So this guy found that combining next generation sequencing alongside optical genome mapping, he found successful results for detecting both single nucleotide variants and large variants. There's been so many breakthroughs using optical genome mapping to actually look at C19. So could we possibly partner with some of these companies and get a piece of that pie? Because they obviously need us to help map the larger structural variants. So Fulgent Genetics has secured contracts for C19 and their NGS and Illumina has secured contracts also and they're also next generation sequencing. What does NGS go well with? Optical mapping, baby. We're talking bio nano genomics. As you guys know, there is no one genomic company that is the ultimate boss here. If we work together, we can benefit the world and we can all make money. So I would love this collaborative, synergistic system working in unison to spank cancers, candy. Yep, yeah, that's right. That's a baboon's booty. Ooh, really red. In other news, I heard Pac Bio is getting slapped around because in the University of Goodness, that's right, the University of North Carolina of Chapel Hill. So these guys are at the forefront of genetics. They're pushing really hard to be a top 16 university. And they were showing off the technology that they've been using currently to run tests. So as you can see, we got Illumina here. We've got alternative technology, 10x genomics. We've got long read technologies, aka Oxford Nanopore and Bio Nano Genomics, baby. So they were talking about the Sapphire system as well. An investment in the future of genome research and can now generate up to 10 GB of DNA sequence data. Now here, this is very interesting. We have since retired pack bio but continue a relationship with ncsu to complete experiments requesting these services Ooh, they retired pack bio they gave their pension to someone else there's no more oatmeal cookies for you baby there's no more pack bio on the list there is only bio nano and see the thing is i don't have a problem with uh, pacific bioscience or pack bio i just want them to work with bingo because if they work together they can actually help free the world of disease they can secure a disease free future so let's be brothers in arms hold on just a minute i want to check what um arc's been doing with pack bio recently yokily dokily since the new year we've seen nothing but minus 21 million minus 12 million selling shares selling shares minus 44 million that week another minus 15 million that week another minus 12 million that week another minus 7 million that week so maybe they've been overexposed they've put too much into one single company are they retiring pack bio maybe not but they're definitely reducing their position though so in the uk over this end of the pond i just wanted to show you guys you can see here that the uk government government and CureVac enter a new partnership to tackle the new future variants of C19. How can they tackle this? They need to be testing, baby. So the UK has been spending a lot of money on getting these vaccines in. We've got 50 million new doses of vaccines. We've got a broader portfolio of 407 million doses already secured by the UK government to date. And this new vaccine against the new C19 strains are going to be provided by CureVac and they're currently undergoing their phase three trials. And as you can see here, this is our health and social care secretary, Matt Hancock. And this guy was saying he wants to take full advantage of the world leading genomics expertise of the UK. So the new agreement is going to utilize the UK's expertise on genomics and virus sequencing to allow new variants of vaccines based on messenger RNA technology to be developed quickly against new strains of C19 if they're needed. Last but not least, there's going to be a huge surge in testing to be deployed. So this is the 1st of February 2021. The UK government has come out with this. They need to deploy mass testing and suppress the spread of C19 variant. Yet again, we've got so many positive cases in this country and all all these 
positive cases will be sequenced for genomic data to help understand these new variants. So if they're going to be doing sequencing, they might as well be doing the optical genomic mapping and see if they can actually check all of the people who have been infected for specific biomarkers to show that are you more likely to suffer because of a biomarker in your genetics? That is what they need to check for also. And baby, they can't do it without us, man. They need us to do the optical genome mapping. So it literally looks like we've got all our fingers in the pie and I cannot begin to imagine what we can actually come out with in the future. If we can look at biomarkers for so many different diseases, especially for ones that are specifically where all the funding is going into right now, I can't see why we can't get a nice cash flow, a little piece of that genetic testing and diagnosis pie. By the way, I wanted to send this last thank you Bruno for sending this in to me. I was sent this picture by a, a Twitter friend called Bruno and he's shown me that someone has done their DD where they said BlackRock investing in BioNano could be bigger than we think. I did a bit of digging. Brian Deese, the current global head of sustainable investing at BlackRock, is also Biden's National Economic Council director. Now with Biden ready to pump $415 billion in emergency spending to scale up vaccinations, testing, contact tracing and genomic sequencing and other efforts to fight against C19, well you know what I'm getting at. Oh baby, thank you very much for watching guys. Thank you so much for sending this in to me. I cannot tell you to buy or sell BioNano Genomics. I'm not a financial advisor and all of this was for entertainment only. But if I'm looking at price predictions, I really think that we could do something special here because we've got so many different avenues, so many different revenue streams that we're in now. And although some people may think, you know, we can only find certain things and we're only useful in certain areas, we are very much a piece of the pie. So with so much money going into genetics and with our machine being capable of doing things and seeing things, that other companies cannot. Why wouldn't we be able to be successful? So that being said, I just can't wait for us to see what we're going to come out with this year. I want to see how many sales we can actually close because of the symposium and also because of the festival of genomics. People have seen the tech now. So how many people are going to be ordering machines or ordering consumable packages? I have no idea what the stock's going to do next week, but I'm looking forward to the future and I'm in it for the long run. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I really love and appreciate you guys. Thank you for always supporting me. If you find these videos useful and entertaining, please click join up here it's only 99 cents a month and it helps me create great videos like this but if you're unable to join just you clicking the like button and clicking subscribe means the world to me thank you so much for watching i love y'all yeehaw mr investor lot over it out baby